Hey y'all, thanks for stopping in. I uh, I don't know if this is a doodle with Doc or crafting with Doc or what it'll be, but um, the other day I was watching one of the one of the people I watch on YouTube, and he's doing an EDC thing for people to send in, and one of the folks sent in a minimalist wallet that they made, and it was really cool. Um, I've been carrying this one. Uh, for a while, this is—I mean, this is very simple. It's just a piece of leather folded over, and a couple of leather tongs stitched through. And it's okay, except when you carry it like that, and that happens. So, this other one was made out of different colored leather. And uh, it looked really cool. So anyway, I went through my leather drawer down here and pulled out a couple of scraps that I think kind of work together. Keep in mind, I am colorblind. I know this. But I'm pretty sure that I got black, a couple of browns, and a gray. So that's what I'm going to think they are anyway. Usually I go and I make my stuff so that the outside is showing, and I'll probably do that with this black, make that the outside just because I like it. But on the inside, I may have, have it all like that. So, anyway, let me get this all trimmed out, and uh, I'm going to use one of my old drafting squares. I mean, I use this for everything. I mean, I, it's been used on my dra on drafting for blueprint. <laughs> it's been used for blueprints. I've used it when I've been painting. I mean, it's got oil paint on it, so I've used it for acrylic paints. I've used it for yeah, just about everything, including leather. So, uh. Yeah, let me get things situated here. I'm going to get things marked up, make sure everything is nice and straight, etc., etc. Oh, and for sizing, I'm going to use one of these. Everybody gets these junk cards in the mail. They're the exact same size as a credit card and, you know, most driver's licenses and all the other stuff that we end up having to carry. And it fits nicely right there. So I'm going to need... Oh, about that much of this. But first things first, we get, get everything square and cut down, and then I'll bring you back and show you my next step. All right? Cool. All right. Hopefully, we're recording. Ugh. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let's see what I got over here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work, that'll work. Put my measure card back. Alright, this is what I got. Maybe I should pull that measure card back out. I got this card, and it should slide down in there like that, and down in there like that. And same on this side. That way. Hmm. I did that one upside down. Imagine that. Alright. So. This is. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue along all these edges. And then clamp it up. So, I'll show a little bit of that. Put a little bit of glue out. This is just uh, fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree. It's supposed to be super glue. It works pretty good for most things I use it for. 
Need a different pair of glasses so I can see what I'm doing. This is the residue of the tofu powder, and it's mixed with the carrots and kamaboko and then moyaki. Now I'm gonna go along the edge. Just a little bit. Don't need a whole lot. This is just to hold it in place so that I can mark the holes and then stitch it. So we'll go like that. And lay that down there like that. Now I'll take a little bit more. And we'll come down this side. Perfect. Her most famous dish is served to all guests in their Kaiseki meal. Irabu Jiru. Poisonous sea snake soup. She opens it and usually takes out the spines. I'm all about that because the bones are not good. Okasan uses only black banded sea crate snakes sourced from nearby Kudaka Island. Once cured, the sea snakes go to market. However, the best ones are saved for Kana restaurants. The snake is extremely poisonous. Uh, I've heard from 10 to 12 times stronger than the venom of a cobra. Eugene is carrying on her mother's recipe. Okay, recipes. put this but down here. There is a secret here at Kana that only Okasan knows how to make. She used to, with a friend, they would harvest the snake eggs from the live ones. Oh, come on. I, I kid you not. They would smoke it over a special smoke, a special ingredient, and then they would see them. And just a couple of clamps. This I'll go that way. Put this like that. I figured I need a little bit more glue. Almost did it. Almost had enough. Now I'm going to have way too much. I hate wasting resources. But, oh well. I know this is really entertaining, isn't it? Watching me glue pieces of leather together. I just realized I left this TV on babbling in the background. Now that I'm almost done doing what I'm doing, I'll turn it off. Because these are what I have left, I'll use two of these about like that. All right, now I'm going to let this dry for a half an hour or so, and then I'll come back and uh, show you all the next step. All right, all right. Hey, I'm back. Alright. I don't know, it's been a half hour or, or whatever, but um, let's take these clamps off. I try to keep them semi-organized. 
not that it always works, but I try to keep them about where I know where they're at. So, there we go, looking something like that. And this is basically how this is going to work. I mean, it'll slide in there. Oops, here goes my hammer. And one will slide in there. And the same on this side. I just have to keep my stitches properly. Uh, so, that's what this is. This is a hole punch. And we'll start right here on the, right there on the edge. It's going to be loud. That went all the way through. Put the one in the last hole done. And... the glue out of course leather gets stuck inside these little holes sometimes it's gonna be a pain in the neck We'll just start here. Now I'm going through three layers, so it might be a little might be a little more difficult. Anyway, I'm going to repeat that all the way around, and then I'll bring y'all back. Oops, I hope y'all saw that. Probably banging and banging and banging moved it all around, huh? Are we back in the frame? Oh, stand up out of this chair. I'll tell you, it's cold out. My bones are achy. Where are we at? All right. I'm just going to come around. You know, do the rest of these the same way. So, y'all don't need to see that. Hey, y'all. As you can see, I've taken this off. I needed to clean up some holes using just a small awl. Now, I'm not sure if I want to go and do a blanket stitch. Or do a running stitch. I've got a piece of waxed line here. Let's uh, the thing is, I, it's fairly easy to just pull it back out again if I decide I don't like it. So. Your hole, there we go. Gotta go over that way. Avoid the glasses. Yes, completely. Of course, and everything's gonna get grabbed up. Blanket stitch is one of the easiest stitches to do. And it looks pretty cool. Go again. I guess I'm gonna have to clean this stuff off. I've actually got two pairs of glasses on, and that's the third pair that I don't need at the moment. What I do need to do though is lock this stitch in place. I'm just going to pull it back out again. 
because it is just that easy to do. Come through there like that, pull it all the way through. No. No, no, no. We'll go through this way. I'll lock it in on this side. That might make it easier anyway. Make it easier for me to find the hole. That's for sure. Give it to me to do things backwards. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that look. It'll give it a give it a bit more texture in the in the back pocket too or in the front pocket <coughs> that's the whole point of these minimal wallets you don't carry them in your in your back pocket where they can get stolen easily and they also cause you know some hip discomfort when you're sitting down all the time and throw your back out and I have enough problems with my back so these actually come in handy for that. So anyway, I don't know. Y'all want to sit here and watch me? Watch me sew. I'm gonna do this corner up at least twice. Or uh, would you rather I shut it on down and just come up and show you all the last part? Yeah, that's probably it. Probably the best thing to do, huh? Because you don't need to sit here listening to me babble at myself. And everybody knows pretty much how to sew. I'm just going to follow these holes around until I get done. And then I'll start again and do this other side. So I'll bring you all back when it's finished. All right, here we go. We're back. And I've got it all sewn up. These are a few cards I'm going to show. Uh, I got it stitched all the way around. I really like the multi-calico type look. Um, it'll take it a, a day or two to, to fold up properly. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different cards. We'll take uh, three of them here, put them in there like that, put these two in there like that, and that seems to work pretty well. We'll do the same thing over here, and they fit pretty well. So now it's just a matter of just a matter of getting the stuff out of my wallet wherever I put my wallet I think I put it back in my pants and uh, get it stuffed in there and then I'll put a rubber band around it for a day or so until it forms to fit so yeah there we go a minimalist wallet made out of scrap and all together it's probably taking me I don't know maybe an hour if I put all this video together so anyway yeah thank you all for stopping in taking a little bit out of your busy schedule to see what kind of craziness I'm up to I really do appreciate it if you would push that like button down there subscribe have your friends subscribe you never know what I'm going to do thank you people bye bye